I am Philip Kumar Swain and I am standing before you to teach you in GKRB online classes. Students, today I am teaching for class 6 standard and today our topic is early humans that comes under the section history. Students, before this there is a chapter called when, where and how. It means that the from when or from the origin of the history and where we can find the different sources regarding history and how how it could be found the first chapter if we will uh, take a detail then we will know that what are the different sources how, from which we can know the sources of history and the first one is archaeology archaeology students I have told you earlier that it is a study of the remains of the past especially about the things which we get after extraction from the ground it may be of different types it may be in the form of stones iron copper plates and uh, some remains of the animal bones human bones and etc etc so by coming to the topic early humans means we'll know about the how human beings originated what was the origin of the human beings should we all know that the time the present time what we are in, st or in standing now is not the same position what the early humans were do the human beings at that sort of time in the primitive area primitive era they were going to where they going to school where they going to offices or where they eating the same food what we are eating today were there roads school colleges buildings vehicles what was it present at that sort of time no it was not like that so we will study in this chapter in detail that what was the situation like so as the chapter suggests early humans i have read, uh, written some topics here what are the topics to be covered in this chapter the first one is stone age stones then types what are the types of stone age or in which category the stone age can be divided then human evolution how the human beings have been have evolved what was their reason? How from where they have come from? Then Paleolithic age, the first type is the Paleolithic age. Then in that era, the discovery of fire. What are the types of tools they were using? And what are the society? How are they on the lifestyle? That we will study in this topic, Paleolithic age. Then two places, especially the Munshi, situated in present-day Karnataka and Bhim Bidka. these are very prehistoric and primitive places so in Madhya Pradesh, this is situated in Madhya Pradesh by studying or we will do a case study of this, both these places then we will know that what type of cave paintings, tools or etc etc we have got from these places then the last two topics is the second other two types of stone age that is the Mesolithic age and Neolithic age students so, then we know that archaeology is the main basis by which we know about our prehistoric times that is the only source we can't say that geography and civics tells us about history no archaeology tells us about all that then what is stone age students we all know that the stone age is divided into three categories what are they the first one is paleolithic age students you please look at the board then you will know that the greek words paleo it means old and lithos means stone is called the Paleolithic age means it's also known as the old stone age and there are some sub points also it lasted about 10,000 BC means near about 12,000 years ago the people the early humans existed they were living and next it's also divided into two groups or two uh, stages that is the early middle paleolithic age and the late upper paleolithic age so it has been further divided into two then students will come towards the next that is the mesolithic or middle age here as paleo stands for old here meso stands for middle it lasted about 10,000 BC till 8,000 BC then in that era the stones were called as microliths and the stones were used for different purposes like uh, lighting the fire and tools 
and making different uh, cave paintings, wall paintings, and different types of things they were making. You can see ornaments also by carving the stones. So this is the Mesolithic age, and the last one is the Neolithic age. Students, now we will go through the third category of the Stone Age, that is the Neolithic Age or the New Stone Age. Students, uh, in a few minutes ago, now I have told you that the meaning of Paleo means old and the Meso means middle. Now, the Neo means new, that is why it is written as New Stone Age. It settled around 10,000 years ago to around 4,000 years ago. This was the time when people began to grow crops and settle down. And then we will come to the topic human evolution. That how human beings evolved. Students, we know that the scientific name of the human beings is the Homo sapiens. Students, human evolution. Evolution means students, that what was the process? What was the uh, thing? What, what made it? Uh, forcefully to the origin of the human beings. Humans did not always look the way we are standing here, we are seeing. They were different. We can see, uh, you can have a look at your textbooks in page number S11, the stages of human evolution, how they bended, they were walking like animals by, by both their hands and legs they were using, that is called the hominins. We will study further that. There was a whole process of evolution that took place for us to be the way we are. The evolution of humans from apes began millions of years ago. At the earlier stage, humans walked on all four, means two hands and two legs. And that were called the hominids. Uh, look at the word hominids. It means, it means, the human being walked on all four by two hands and two legs. But as the time passed by, they became bipedal. Friends, look at this word bipedal. It means they knew the art of walking by, that is, they started walking on the two feet and eventually upright, they stand upright like we are doing now. That is called Homo erectus. This left their hands free to use their new activities they were capable of doing. The increased hand-eye connectivity or activities led to the larger and more developed brains. As the time passed by, they knew the art of living. These physical features made from different uh, from other animals. They made them different because human beings were not animals. What the animals can do, we are more advanced than them. Then they could make tools and throw things to the uh, defend to the animals to defend themselves. And students, we all know that the modern humans belong to the earth and they are appeared in the earth two lakh years ago. That is two thousand years ago. Students, in the pic you can see that the different stages of human evolution. Then we will move forward to the next, that is the Paleolithic age. The first one is the Paleolithic age. Stone age as I have told earlier that divided into three stages or three categories. The first one is the Paleolithic age and in that stage, in the Paleolithic age, how the human movement was going on. Here I have um, written the topic Paleolithic age, then in that area, in that section, we will first read human movement. Then the second one is the food, what they were eating, because students, it may be a bird, it may be an animal, it may be a human being. You need food to eat to survive, otherwise, it is not possible to survive. The third one is shelter. They may be moving like nomads from one place to another as wanderers, but they need a particular place to save themselves from heat, light, and rain. And the fourth one is clothing.
And what were the clothes? The first two will study about human movement. Early humans kept moving from place to place. They used to move in search of food. When they had plucked all the flowers or all the fruits and killed all animals in one area for eating purpose, they moved from one place to another in search of only food. And they always searched a place where water supply was available, means near the rivers, near the lakes, near the streams, because we all know that water is an essential element for survival of, of the human beings and animals also. When animals came nearby the river to drink water, they hide in one place and they tried to kill them. And that was the method for them to kill all the animals and uh, eat them. Since animals also came to the river to drink water, hunting became easier for the human beings. Next, the topic is food. What was the reading? Students, now we are reading some foods where you cooked, baked, we are reading large quantities of spices, uh, salt, sugar, everything, oil also, but this was not available at the primitive era. So what were they eating? The humans of the old stone age were hunters and food gatherers. Means they just hunt animals, they ate them in a raw, in a raw manner and they moved from one place to another and gathered all the foods. They did not know how to grow crops at that sort of time. They were not farmers. Their food consisted of nuts, roots, fruits, eggs and raw flesh of animals. From some of these game paintings we can know that the hunting scenes that what they were doing and how which animals may have existed in that region. So we know to express our feelings we do one thing, we write somewhere, we draw something. So at that sort of time the primitive man or the early humans draw in the cave paintings or walls. The next comes the shelter. Early humans did not know how to build houses. They took shelters on trees and later on in caves to protect themselves from wild animals and elements of bad weather like rain and sun. The last one is clothing. What were they eating? We knew. What were they wearing? We must know that early humans clothes were made up of animal hides, animal skin and barks of trees to save themselves from one uh, from bad uh, elements of the weather. Next students will study about the discovery of fire. Students, then after studying all that, we'll study about the discovery of fire. We all know that fire is one of the five elements of the planet Earth, along with air, water, soil. Fire is one of the five elements. We know that. How the early humans knew that the fire is an also an element? How they discovered it? So students, we must know that it, the discovery of fire was very accidental. They didn't knew about it. Once two big stones or two small stones were crushed, and uh, by that they knew that there is an, uh, there is something like fire which will light up something, and then uh, gradually they knew the meaning of fire. At night, when everyone got into the cave, the fire lit at the entrance of the cave and to keep the animals away, they lit it and they knew that the wild animals fear from fire. Therefore, they knew that the use of fire was a very important invention in their lives. They may have lit fire on cold winter nights to keep them warm. Later on, they began to roast the meat from animals they hunted. Once, accidentally, when the fire was lit nearby, a piece of flesh fell over it and when they took it out, they knew that it was roasted and that it tasted very good. Then they knew that we can also cook food on fire. Then it is possible that when some people in the group went out to look for food, others stayed back and in the cave to look after the fire. This was the whole story about fire, the discovery of fire, then social life. What was the social life at that sort of time? Early humans formed small groups or bands to protect themselves from wild animals. 
they lived a nomadic life in search of food. We do not know exactly what work was done by men and women. Although there were no family ties, but it is quite likely that the younger men went hunting and while the older one stayed in the cave to keep for fire burning and the women looked after the children and they were engaged in painting the walls and they did the cooking also. Students, now we move to the, the next topic is tools. Tools here is divided into two parts, core tools and flake implements. Students, there are two parts, the core tools and the flake implements. What were the different types of tools they were using? They were only one element they were used to, that is about the rocks. They didn't know the use of the iron was not present at that sort of time in the primitive era. So these were made with the core method. The core tools were made with the core method. That is, they were made by chipping away portions of a piece of rock till they were in their desired shape. They were very sharp and that was used for cutting and digging in the field or in the soil. The second one was flake implements. What was flake implements? These were made with the flake method. Means this method involved cutting off large flake from a rock and then shaped into a tool. These were used for chapping meat and pieces and skinning dead animals. So there were different types of tools, strengths, core and flag implements and the uses were different. Then students will learn about two different pieces according to this topic to be covered Tungsi and Bhim Bhetha. Students, the first one is the Humsi. Where is Humsi situated? It is situated in Karnataka. We will study about what was Humsi all about. As well as uh, it is called Humsi. Many tools have been found in Humsi, which is located in Karnataka. They may have been used for various activities. The site has been named after the early or nearby village called Humsi, which was enclosed by a limestone plateau. Several minor streams in this area were joined to form the Humsi Nalla, which is a tributary of the river Krishna. Then the region is covered with thorny scrub type vegetation. The availability of water. A large variety of plants and animals as well as stones to make tools for the factors for the main occupation of the sri chain. Then students and many places in Humsi, which is situated in Karnataka, early women probably lived for the some time and made their tools. Some scholars, some historians describe this as habitation and factory sites. Humsi was the called a stone age factory. The historians, the archaeologists have named this city as the stone age factory, a site where stone tools were manufactured. Then, similarly, the Paleolithic tools were sites were found in the different parts of the world at this too. More than 100 years ago, four school boys discovered some cave paintings in France. There were 1500 engravings and 6600 paintings made by cavemen living in around 15,000 BC to 9000 BC. It's strange, it's not about, it's not all about that the primitive man or the early man lived in India. They existed in the whole world and their remains, the archaeologists have found in the shape of cave paintings, wall paintings, the different types of products which, we, which they got from the soil. So that are the um, evidences, clues to know about the primitive man. So in the next topic or the next place is called the B Betta. As I have told you, this was in Chipri, uh, the days, and this one is Kanadha. Madhya Pradesh. B Betta, located 40 kilometers. South of Bhopal in Madhya Pradesh, 
has been a silent witness to the evolution of mankind. It is like a prehistoric art of studio where many generations of people have drawn figures on the cave walls, on the walls of the cave. According to scholars, these paintings belong to the Neolithic age. The paintings depict hunting scenes, magical scenes and scenes from everyday life. This is May, Wimbitka, a famous place. And that wall painting show that what type of human beings or what they were doing in that time. You know, to express our feelings, we sometimes sing a song, we draw something and likewise the early man, the primitive man drew something on the cave walls. This is all about Bimbetka and Humsi. Students, in the previous few minutes ago, I have told you about the Paleolithic age. Now we will study about the Mesolithic age. Students, Mesolithic age is in one of the categories of Stone Age. We know that this, all the ages are different from one another in the use of tools. The variety of tools they were using, the standard of living they do or they were staying or residing in that area for different reasons. That differs from one another. The tools used in the Mesolithic age were very advanced and then those from the prehistoric period or the previous period. These tools were smaller, sharper, and more effective, and these were called the microliths. Students, remember this word, microliths means it means the uh, tools which were very sharper and more effective, and they were called microliths and were made from animal bones and horns as well as stones. Students, we know that the early humans. They made tools from not only from uh, our stones, but after few years in the Mesolithic age, when they hunt. So what were they doing with the horns and their bones? They were making tools. They were after the sometimes they knew how to make ornaments from animal bones. They were used to make hammers, arrowheads, and scrapers. Microliths have been found at Adamgarh in Madhya Pradesh. Friends in Madhya Pradesh. And next place is the Bagar in Rajasthan. Then there is that these two places. Their remains have been found. If you will visit some places like this, then we can know about the primitive area, primitive life, what the early humans were living. During this age, people started living in simple houses. They knew how to make houses. However, most people continued to live in caves. The process of domesticating animals had begun. Dogs, sheep, goats, and cattle were domesticated. They knew that what are the use of these animals. They domesticated them, they used them from agriculture and they also knew how to milk them, how to milk them and how milk animals were also at uh, real at that sort of time. The next one is the last topic is students, the Neolithic age. The new here yeah, the word new means new technological developments. What were the technological developments in that era? A large number of stone tools like axes, bows, and arrows and spears have been found at the sites like Mehargarh in Pakistan. Students, remember this name Mehargarh. Mehargarh is situated in present day Pakistan. And places like Burzam and Gurfika and JNK, it is a Zammu and Kashmir, and Maski and Piklor in these tools in the Mesolithic age were very polished, very sharper, and they were sometimes sparkly because they used the animal horns and bones also and stones also. Then the invention of the wheel was very important at that period. 
but we know little about the discovery was made however the wheel changed the lives of the early humans with the use of wheel travel was faster and heavy materials or objects could be transported more easily from one place to another the wheel also improved pottery making with the help of fire and the wheel clay pots of different sizes could be made and baked in less time than before later pots also came to be glazed and decorated students archaeologists have found different types of pots pottery and uh, clay toad toys and beards ornaments also by which we can know about the primitive man or about our prehistoric times students at the last we will study about the beginning of agriculture so after these discoveries gradually the early humans knew how to grow crops they became food producers from food gatherers they were now not nomads they knew to how to remain in one, one place to grow crops and to uh, produce more and more crops what they can this period was saw the start of farming it is possible that thorn seeds may have sprouted and plants grow from them and humans of the neolithic age noticed them after eating the fruits they throw the seeds in uh, in somewhere like uh, in the soil and the use the continuous use of water and sunlight after they plants to grow from that place and after seeing that they noticed that how plants were grown with this the early humans went from uh, being hunter gatherers to cultivators which i have told you earlier sickles were found at many sites suggesting that harvesting of crops was done and this changed also allowed for a more sedentary lifestyle and from simple to little advanced lifestyle which no longer was there for the need of nomadic lives it is possible that a division of labor of the slowly began men took care of agriculture hunting and weapon making while women would perform some duties to look after the house and children we will learn about the early farmers in the next chapter and students i hope you have understood the chapter very well and one more request i want to make wherever when you are going through this video please refer the textbook then only you can understand it clearly and after this i will tell you uh, goodbye stay safe and stay in your home thank you very much